We got her cage cleaned. Now it's time for her to go back in. Obviously, you can see this retic, guys, is, is <laughs> very, very used to being handled. What's up, guys? So you guys asked for a video of cleaning. Uh, a couple of you guys said, asked, you know, let's see some dirty cages and how you guys do what you do. So, okay, here we go. It's cleaning day. Uh, as you guys know, every Wednesday, every Saturday, we clean everything top to bottom. No, those aren't the only days we clean, but those are the main cleaning days. And today is a very big cleaning day. Uh, we fed, or I fed, last Friday. And so, been about, you know, five days, four days. Most of the snakes have processed a lot of what we fed and they have either pooped or in some cases they have shed and pooped. So we're gonna go through this step by step and just show you guys how we do what we do. So this here is Alice. Oh, I gotta take the lock out first. Alice is our platinum hat purple girl. And as you can see, this glass is broken right here. So that's why we use two people to get this out. This is a 10 foot cage. And unfortunately, in transport, uh, this is one of the new cages, and in transport, the glass got broken, um, and we are waiting on a new piece um, to show up. So, that's step one. This is how I normally get these out, guys. See, normally, they just come out nice one piece. Um, we always remove the glass when we're cleaning, because we clean the glass. So, now we got that out. Next thing we pull out, water dish. Thank you. And so, you can see here, got a nice big pile of poop. Got a bunch of shed. She peed. So this whole cage needs to be cleaned. Now, first thing we gotta do is get this girl out. Come on. Come on, come here. Come on, big girl. So, we always pull the snake out completely. Not always easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes it's a wrestling match, as you guys can see. There we go. So, now she's secured in there. Now we can go ahead and get this cage clean. So, first thing we're gonna do is pull all the skin out, but I'm gonna get a couple things first. Uh, cleaning supplies. All right, so snakes out, next step. So this right here, guys, this is a big reason why I use paper um, in my cages. So, like I said, I gotta get all this skin out. So we do that. This is a big reason why I use paper, guys. This makes it a lot easier to just get this whole cage. Come on. There we go. Take that. And that's how we get that out. Now, some people would be like, okay, the cage is clean. No, the cage is not clean. Now we spray it down. What am I spraying down with? Bleach and water. Now, there are people out there that say you shouldn't use bleach, it's bad, this, yada, yada, yada. Um, I've been breeding animals, not just reptiles, I've been breeding animals for well over a decade, actually approaching two decades. Bleach and water is an animal breeder's best friend. It just is, period. Bleach kills everything. You let it sit there for a minute or two. Um, one nice thing, about these particular cages, the ABS material that they are made out of, it's not very porous. What do I mean by that? It means that things don't settle into the material. So I don't have to let the bleach set on there for very long before it, it's killed everything in the, uh, you know, bacteria-wise in the cage. So, you guys have seen these. This is what we use for paper towels around here. Why? They're cost-effective, that's why. And they, are much more durable than regular paper towels. So, how I clean, I always start on the sides. Why do I do that? Because the bacteria on the sides and the back is not the same as what's on the floor of the cage, right? There's no poop or pee on the backs, on the back of the cage or on the side. 
And this is also a pretty good demonstration for those of you who cry that the cages aren't very big. Again, this is half the cage and I fit in there pretty well. So go through, wipe down the whole back. Now, for those of you who are not used to the smell of chemicals, you might want to wear a mask or if you're super sensitive, even a respirator. Doesn't bother me, I've been doing this for a long, long time and so I don't wear anything. Probably not the best move, but. So anyways, I got the sides and the back clean. Now I'm gonna wipe down the entire floor of the cage. And as you can see, again, this material is super, super easy to clean. It's almost like a leather, uh, like a, a, a leather consistency. So like that was just some urate right there, literally wiped right off. Um, so we get all that, just like that. A piece of skin, that. And grab two more paper towels and clean the other side. And then the next step is just letting it dry out for a second. And while we do that, we will let you guys see how we clean uh, water dishes. And Russell's gonna show you guys that. So we use bleach, like Wes said. Um, you can see all the shed on here, all the poop, urate, all that stuff. So we'll give it a nice spray down. Inside out, bottom, all that stuff. Because especially with the, the urine soaking into the paper, you'll get urine down here. You'll just want to scrub that, scrub all the sides. You can see that just comes off really easy. So we'll scrub that down, rinse it out real well, fill it up. And we're actually moving to a bigger water dish for her because we're moving some water dishes around with the new big cages. So a bunch of you guys have asked about these, where we get them, what they are. This is a three gallon water dish. We get them from a feed store called Murdoch's. There is tape on the edge here. Reason being, these edges are pretty sharp. And I've had a couple of snakes when they try to dig underneath them, mess their heads up. So we put this, this tape on here and we replace the tape about every five, six months. But it's also part of the reason why we scrub the way we do with that scrubber. Let me see that quick. So part of what we do also, and is just take this on here and really get that edge, right? Because you'll end up with a bunch of stuff on the edge. Um, again, this is not going back in the same snake's enclosure also. So that's another reason why we're gonna take a little bit of extra time on this and make sure that we really get it good and clean. Um, but again, that's how we clean water bowls, guys. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's just taking the, the, the time to do it correctly so we make sure that they're, because our water dish is one of the most important things, right? If the water dish isn't clean, if there's bacteria in the water dish, there's bacteria in the water, that's gonna cause a snake, a snake to get sick. So that's one of the most crucial things to make sure you're cleaning on a regular basis. Um, I know a lot of guys will just refill water. We almost never do that. Literally every time we pull a snake, we pull the water bowl and we clean it with bleach. only fill it about halfway that way if they sit in the water dish when they flood it they don't flood it as much um, if you fill it all the way it's gonna be a pain to get in and get out um, but also again if they sit in there they're gonna you're gonna have three gallons of water all over your tank and it's just gonna be kind of a pain to get out and especially with cleaning it twice a week once a week at minimum um, having that little of water isn't really that big of a deal I mean it's still quite a bit of water it's a gallon and a half so yeah about halfway um, and this one's ready to go back. Okay, next step, new paper in the cage. Uh, we actually just showed you guys this in one of the last videos with some of like the supplies and stuff that we use. So this is a paper holder roller cutter from Uline. I just mounted it to this, uh, to this piece of plywood and then a furniture roller so that we can move it around very easily. Uh, we also, if you look right here on the floor, we have measurements laid out, guys. So obviously all different sizes of cages, two foot, four foot, five foot, six foot, eight foot. Now, this is actually a 10 foot cage, so I'm gonna go beyond it, but because I'm doing it right in front of the cage, I can guess pretty well where I need to stop. That's right about it. Turn that off. Shoot that in. a 
little long on that one, but that's all right. We just fold it over. So, fold it over or leave it, leave it set on the top. Doesn't really matter. Either way, you can do whatever you want. Um, so we will do at least two, usually three layers of paper on these cages. Um, reason being, one layer, one layer is just not enough. Retake peas on that, that paper is literally gonna disintegrate. So you saw how well it held together when we pulled it out. So, and that is because, once again, we use multiple layers. So, again, take that. And the first layer is always the hardest. Second layer goes in a whole lot easier. And I got that one a little bit closer to the appropriate size. There's that, do one more. And again, this thing, this thing right here is a lifesaver, guys. It's, we do things around here to try and make our lives easier because the quicker and more efficiently we can do this, the more cages we can hit in a day, which enables us, again, to do this more frequently, which translates to healthier snakes. And you know, that's a big thing. A lot of you guys often ask, why don't you give them bigger cages? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? The number one name of the game here is keeping these snakes healthy, period. That's our number one objective. The way we do things is, a lot of them are systems that I've developed over the years that allow me to ensure the snakes stay healthy. And again, that is my number one objective with this entire thing. And I always tell you guys, I'm a collector first, breeder second. And I, I can't do one without the other, right? And what I mean by that is, if I don't ensure my snakes are healthy, they're not gonna breed, they're not gonna produce healthy clutches, I'm not gonna get anything out of them. So, step one, make sure they're healthy. Then we can move on to the other parts. Okay, so next step, glass cleaning. Now, I don't usually do this step, but I'll do it so I can show you guys. Uh, how do I do this? This is a window cleaner and a squeegee in one. Instead of using Windex and a lot more paper towels, this is how we clean glass. So this has a solution on it. It's a glass cleaning solution. We've got a bucket over there. Didn't think you guys really needed to see that, but this is how we clean glass, guys. Take this, you see, it eats all that skin and everything right off of there and makes short work. Sometimes you gotta use a little fingernail if it's really stuck, but that all comes off there. Just like that, a little bit. Now, squeegee. Wipe it. Squeegee, just like that. That's literally how we do that. Flip it over, as we do both sides. Same thing. And that piece of skin that's stuck underneath there, we'll peel that off here in a second. But, and then like that. Sometimes I just wipe it on my pants like that because it's just cleaning solution. Just like that. The handle presents a little bit of a, a little bit of a challenge sometimes. So, gotta work around that a little bit. That's all right though. We like our handles. And that's how we do that, guys. Um, so that's actually the outside piece. We're gonna put the other piece in first. We'll show you once it's all put back together. Okay, so we got her cage cleaned. Now it's time for her to go back in. Obviously, you can see this retake, guys, is, is <laughs> very, very used to being handled. Um, she is not typical, but this is, I'll say it's typical for my program because I've spent so much time with these animals. Um, this girl is Alice. She's a platinum head purple. She is going to be six years old this year. She's a very big girl. I've had this girl since uh, about mid 2016. So I didn't get her as a hatchling, but she was maybe four feet when I got her. Obviously she has grown quite a bit. Um, she spent a lot of time with me. Um, I'm really, really attached to this animal. Um, even though she's just a, essentially a basic platinum, obviously she is head purple, so she is technically a two gene snake, but not just her, her overall beauty, but her demeanor. Like this is a snake I use for expos, for educational shows, things like that, because she's very, very predictable. I understand her behavior um, and she's very, very easy to work with. So, and as I say that, she's gonna be super difficult to go back in the cage probably. But this is how we do this, come on. Now, you guys only see me set my hand in there. 
The reason I do that is so they don't pull the paper all over the place as they're going back in. Um, they create friction with their skin, uh, with their scales. That's how they move. And so in me doing that, it's an anchor point for the paper and the paper doesn't move as you guys can see. If I hadn't done that, she'd literally pulled this entire sheet of paper all the way across the cage with her. So that is why I do that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a clean cage. That's how we clean cages here. It's not rocket science, guys, but you guys asked them. So there it is. We literally go through this, as Russell said, as I said, at least twice a week, if not more. It depends on the, uh, on the animal, depends on the cage. Um, you know, flat out. So you know, we'll just show you right here. This right here, so that's been like that for two or three days, and I'll allow that. That is not a filthy cage, right? Um, that, uh, that, is, that is urine. Do we want them to sit in their own urine? No. However, cleaning that, and, and here's part of the reason why, that animal ate four, day, four or five days ago. You know, four or five days ago. There's still a poop coming. I was hoping that it would come out before today. Now it hasn't, and that's okay. We're still gonna clean the cage. Here's guaranteed what's gonna happen. We're gonna pull her out, we're gonna soak her, we're gonna clean this cage. Tomorrow I'm gonna come in and there's gonna be a massive pile of poop in this cage. That's just how it works with retics. And you know, that's one of the things I tell people all the time. If you're not in love with cleaning, don't get retics. Simple as that. Hey, what's up guys? So Weston walking through doing cage cleaning in the previous segment, but long before they ever get to cages, they're in tubs. And they often spend a good few years in tubs in various stages that we're gonna walk you guys through and how to clean them all. So we're gonna go through now how to clean a tub. Um, this is our girl Harmonia. Her and I are not friends. She often tries to bite me. She's just a little feisty little pied. So let's see how this goes. I rarely wear a glove any, oh, please don't. Nice, there you go. So we take them, same thing as we do for the, oh yeah. Same thing as we do for the larger snakes. We put them in a tub, obviously a much smaller tub that's a little more in line with their size. Oh, hi, all right. Oh, ah, bitch. <laughs> she got me guys. I'm behind the camera and she still got me. She's, uh, she can be a little feisty one, but that's just pies for you. So that's what I get for trying to talk and film and not paying attention 100% to what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, so she's in her silk tub, a little bit of iodine, a little bit of water. You can see she made a good old mess of this. Same thing, she ate on Friday, it's Wednesday, it's gross. Paper goes out the window. Cleaning solution. Give it a full spray. Don't just kind of glance it over, make sure you're actually getting in there. I've done this enough now that it's kind of rote memory. Come around to our clean out spot. This water is going to come out nice and warm. Give that a really good hose out. You got a spot on the side of that cage. It probably needs scrubbed. Yep. So then I'm going to come back around here, grab some paper towel, and usually the stuff will come off pretty easy with just a little bit of a cleaning solution spray and some hose down, you know, the pressure that's on the hose. If it does not, we come through, inside, outside, every side, clean it out real good. I'm gonna leave this upside down and drip some water. I'm gonna grab a little paper, same thing, except this one's nice and mobile. We don't need to put it on a rolling rack because it's so light. I can kind of guesstimate the size by hand because I've been doing this long enough. And bam, flip this over. This one's a little wide for this, so we come in, we fold the edge down. And if you're a little bit of a neat freak like I am, you don't want any of your corners or edges to show, so I try to fold everything underneath as best I can. Not the best job in the world, but that's okay. Same thing with this. Um, you saw in the cages, we generally do three pieces of paper. These little guys, they don't make nearly the mess. So you can get away with using two, especially when you clean with the frequency and regularity that we do. So come in there. Cut that. Nice and level. Now you can see her water bowl is dirty too. They don't just make messes in their tanks, they make messes everywhere. Water bowls, anything that's in their enclosure is gonna leave a mess. 
Same thing. Come, Russell showed you guys this before. Spray inside, outside, every side. And because this one's so gross, and grab the scrubber, come through. Same thing Weston showed you, work the rims, work the edges. Make sure all that gets off, because that's their primary point of contact, right? They're not just gonna arch and drop into their bowl. They're gonna drag themselves over the sides, which means they're gonna get poop on themselves, poop all over their tank. And not only is that gross just from like the sake of it being gross, it's not healthy, it's not cleanly. And those are two things we strive for here very avidly is keeping our snakes healthy and keeping our snakes clean. Same thing. So now that's nice and clean. We got all that solution out. Fill it up about halfway so that when they get in their water bowl, they naturally will displace the water, of course. We don't want it to go everywhere. Um, where do these bowls come from? Those bowls come from the dollar store. They're literally a dollar a piece. Dollar a piece. There you go, folks. Bowl goes back in. I'll get her. Okay. You cool. Just, just yep, I'll it. get the lid. She already got me once. Let's see if she gets me again. There we go. See, she's fixated on Joe. She's kind of like a cobra. You give her something to look at, and she's like, yep, there we go. Yeah, see? She wants to look at Joe. <laughs> Joe's got his guard up. Yeah, All right. So then she goes in there easy peasy like that. Weston can do that snake whisperer touch and calm them down. She's now clean. Water's at the front. Name tag's at the front. She goes back in. Woo. Make sure we make sure we tuck it all the way in there. We don't want to give them any wiggle room to try and get out. Or God forbid, get it, you know, right now here in Utah, it's, it's March. So it's not very warm out. So God forbid they get out of their tank or out of their enclosure. We don't want anything to happen to them in the building. And that's it. That's how we clean tubs. So we walked you guys through how to clean tanks, how to clean bigger enclosures, bigger tubs. So you can see this guy right here made a pretty good mess. He just ate last week, all like the rest of them. So we give him a little tap, make sure he's not still in food mode. And I don't think I mentioned this before. So part of what we're doing the frequency with which we clean is obviously to keep the animals healthy, keep the animals safe, but it's also to see if there's anything that we need to be aware of. So when I pull, you know, when we handle these guys as much as we do, we kind of just give them a once over visual inspection, make sure they have no stuck shed, make sure they don't have any weird looking lesions or wounds or anything that might give us cause for concern or anything that we would want to address. This dude looks pretty good. So he's going to go in the solution of iodine and water. Make sure the lid goes on. They're gonna naturally want to get out. If you see, if you want to come down here, the water is not even a third of the way filled on there. Don't try to fill your water too much, you know, thinking that it's gonna give them a better soak. They'll soak themselves if they want to. So we come through here. That's gross. Trash. Grab that little bit of skin. Trash. Spray it out. Water bowl is gross. Try to get pick as much of that skin off as you can. Dump the water. Spray it out, inside and out. Come around to our water. Same thing, and with these, I've kind of figured out a method of just leaving it in there, because the motion of the water pushing it around will keep it in there. Flip it over. Spray the outsides. Dump it. Shake it out real good. Come back over here. Water jug, same thing, maybe about halfway, a little more actually. And so for these super little ones, shake it out. We just take one piece of paper towel. These guys don't make a very big mess. Fold it over at about the third mark. Goes in there nice and neat like so. Water goes at the front. You can obviously tell where it goes because there's a spot missing. Open him up. Oh, it's okay. Get any excess soap or not soap, but um, solution off rather. And then retics always act best when you kind of just convince them it's their idea. If I try to shove this guy back in there, he's gonna fight me every step of the way. So we're gonna wait till we're in a posture where it seems like he wants to go back in there. And it takes a few seconds sometimes and that's okay. And naturally they're gonna smell their own scent in there and everything on the top. And they're just gonna glide right back in. Push it closed so he still has enough room to get in there. 
If you want to make them go a little faster, a little flick of the tail, close them, easy peasy, that's done. So it's gonna be a little redundant, um, but we're gonna run through how to clean these bigger tubs now. Weston showed you guys how to do the tanks. We showed you guys how to do the uh, water dishes, water bowls, how to do the baby babies, and how to do a little bit bigger, maybe in the one year to 18 month range. These are gonna be anything, you know, 2018, 2018, 2020. So anything from a year to three years old, give or take. So this is our girl Pandora. She's one of the very limited non Retix here at Wildfire. She's actually super clean, but I just spilled her water everywhere, so we're gonna clean her anyway, just so she's not laying in it. Hi, how are you gonna be? So, as any, some of you guys might know, berms have a tendency to be a bit huffy, and so that's what she's doing. It's okay. So same thing, guys. I'm gonna take her. I got a smaller tub here that's her size for, you know, full of the iodine solution, a little bit of water. Something I didn't mention before, it's fine now because I've made this tub a while ago. Check your water temperatures, guys. Don't cook your snakes alive, please, when you're trying to give them a bath. She goes in there, easy peasy, same thing. Water gets pulled out, paper gets pulled out. Take this, this is obviously just water. There's no urine or urate or poop. Take it there. A little bit of spray, boom, boom, bam. Spray all around. We're gonna leave her water be for right this moment because it's so full. Same thing, come in. Make sure you get all those grooves real good. If you guys notice, this shirt is black but it has bleach stains all over it. Don't wear good clothes when you're gonna clean your animals like this, especially if you're using bleach. I have lost so many outfits that started out as, oh, I might go out in this one night to becoming work clothes. So like Weston said earlier, even her water's fine. I mean, you can see that is literally perfectly clean. We're gonna change it out anyway, just cause we don't, it's stagnant. It's not running water of any kind. That's how bacteria builds up and also it's sort of amoeba and stuff. So like Russell, show, Russell showed you guys earlier, spray it out, close it down. Good to go. And then we'll put that there. So same thing, hose down the water bowl, hose down the tub, fold your paper. I'm not very good at making symmetrical folds. Usually it helps if you also fold it along the right axis. Push it in there, fold it down. And you're gonna say, or some guys might say, hey, it's not completely dry in there. In this instance, that's okay. We know it was just water that we sprayed it out with and we gave it a thorough dousing. I also don't mind leaving a little bit of moisture on that bottom tier because it helps keep humidity and keep the snakes healthy and give them good sheds. So we fold it there, fold it there. There you go. Take our water jug. Not always the cleanest endeavor in the world or the driest. Same thing, water goes out the front. Slide that back in nice and easy. Get her out. Hey girl, get her, oh yeah. She actually looks really, really good today. I know, huffy girl. So yeah, and that's it. Same thing as we did with the retics, as the, the baby retics rather, and you know, with these larger snakes. If you try to stuff them in there, guys, one, it's gonna damage your relationship with the animal. Two, they're just gonna fight you. You let it be their idea. They'll go carry themselves right in. We've shown that in a lot of videos. Can't stress enough how much easier that would make life. And that's it, that's how you clean bigger tubs. Oh yeah.
We are almost done with cages for today. Start all over. Yep, start all over again in two days. And that is it, cages are clean. Every single tank has been cleaned today, every single tub. Everybody got a nice poop, a nice shed, and we are looking good. Now comes the fun part. So I'm gonna turn around here in a second. You can see everyone's nice and clean. This isn't generally how we leave things. Everything is nice and organized and has a home, as you've seen in most of our videos. So the next part of this and the very last part of it is everything going back to stasis. So Russell's gonna go outside, I'll shoot that real quick, and we're gonna wash out all the tubs that we used, spray them out with bleach, hose them down, put all these tables away, and then that'll be the end of the day. So yeah, then after everything's broken down on the inside, take all this out here, get to enjoy the view a little bit. Same thing, everything gets sprayed down, bleached down, and then we get the hose, everything gets hosed out, let it air dry a little bit, and then it all goes back inside and gets stacked up neatly. And that's kind of it, folks. I'll shoot one last piece showing what it looks like when we're done. But that's the day. It's about 4.30. Started at about 9.30. So, I mean, that's a full work day. And there was three or four of us going at it. So, it kind of gives you a little piece of what it's like. A little, a little slice, you know, day in the life of what it's like to keep this many large reptiles, large retics. And then, so, all of your things clean. You can see Russell was just cleaning the stuff outside. Now one of the last steps, making sure we get all that gross stuff off the floor, get everything vacuumed, get the humidifier barrels filled, get that back in place so we can add nice humidity, get everything swept. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's how everything's supposed to look. And the last thing we gotta do is turn off the lights. <laughs>